Now, general population 5.5%, infertile population a little more, 8%. In the patient who presents with recurrent miscarriages, it is around 13.3%. And the patient who give history of miscarriages and infertility, the prevalence may be as high as 24.5%. Now, the most common anomaly in general population is arcuate uterus. But uh, it doesn't cause much of uh, reproductive failures. And in high-risk population with the history of miscarriages and infertility, the most commonest uterine anomaly is the septate uterus. Now, coming to the classifications, various systems have come. So, first came the American Fertility Society Mullerian Anomaly Classification in 1988. Then, again came the American Fertility Society Uterovaginal Anomalies, 1988, the revised one. And then came the ASRM and the vacuum classification VACUM came in 2005. And then came the ESHRE and the ESG 2013. ESHRE stands for the European Society of Human Reproduction and Embryology. ESG stands for the uh, European Society of Gynecological Endoscopist. So, this classification which had come recently in 2013 was based on the anatomy of the female genital tract. So, we'll discuss all these classifications one after other. So, this is the 1988 classification given by American Fertility Society and we see that this has got 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 classes. So, in the class 1, we have the atresias or agenesis of the independent structure. So, if the vagina is not formed, it is called as 1A. If cervix is not formed, it is called 1B. If uterine fundus is not formed, it is called 1C. If the tubes are not formed, it is called 1D. And if it is a combined atresia of any of these, it is called as combined or 1E. Now, in the second category, that is the unicornuate uterus, you can have A, B, C and D. A is a unicornuate uterus which has a rudimentary horn with an endometrial cavity that communicates. Now, in the unicornuate uterus non-communicating horn, the B variety, there is a rudimentary horn with an endometrial cavity which does not communicate. Now, to C, there is a rudimentary horn which has no cavity and in D, there is no rudimentary horn. Now, coming to the class 3. Class 3 is nothing but uterus diadelphus in which there is two uterine horn. This has been formed if the Mullerian ducts have fail to fuse in the midline. So, this is C3 classification which is also called as a didelphus. Now, coming to the fourth category which is the biconuate uterus. The, now, the biconuate uterus can be a complete biconuate uterus or partial biconuate uterus. In this, the, there is only single cervix whereas in didelphus there are two cervix. Now, coming to the fifth category or the septate uterus, the septum can be the Mullerian ducts have fused, but the intervening septum has failed to dissolve. So, the septum between the two Mullerian ducts can be complete or it can be a partial septum. And then comes a sixth category, which is arcuate uterus, which is nothing but an arc in the fundus. And then comes to the seventh category, which is itrogenic, which is the diethyl still based roll. If the mother has taken diethyl still based roll as an antiemetic, in the first four months of pregnancy and she was carrying a female baby. So, that is why diethyl stilbestrol has been withdrawn as an antiemetic for morning sickness of pregnancy. Now, coming to the later classification by AFS. So, they told 1 is dysgenesis, 2A and 2B. So, uh, class 2 is disorders of vertical fusion, class 3 is disorders of lateral fusion of Mullerian duct. Now, in the class 2, which are the disorders of vertical fusion, we can have transverse vaginal septum, cervical agenesis or dysgenesis. So, in the transverse vaginal septum, it could be an obstructive or unobstructive disorders. So, why we classify this an obstructed and unobstructive? Because obstructive will lead to formation of hematocolpos, hematometra, hematosalpinx and the patient will present with Cryptomenorrhea. Crypto means hidden. So, she will menstruate but the menstrual blood will collect inside the reproductive tract. So, if it is an obstructed transverse vaginal septum, when we excise the septum, the patient symptoms get relieved. Now, other problem in the vertical fusion can be cervical agenesis or dysgenesis and then comes the class 3. Class 3 is a disorders of laterally 
defective fusion of the mullerian ducts now this can be asymmetric or symmetric now among the asymmetric defects we have uniconvoluate uterus with non communicating horn unilateral obstruction of cavity unilateral vaginal obstruction associated with double uterus and it can be a symmetric defect symmetric defects include the diadelphus septate biconvoluate t shaped uterine cavity which is mostly iatrogenic due to diethylstilbestrol or it can be a uniconvoluate uterus with or without a rudimentary horn in the class 4 we have unusual configurations of a mixed variety of vertical and lateral fusion defect <music>